Number 11. Florida's Reptiles It's no secret that Florida is home to some of the most terrifying wildlife in the United States, namely its large, sometimes venomous, and often terrifying reptiles. The state is perhaps best known for its infamously aggressive alligator population. Numbering an estimated 1.3 million, gators are found in all 67 counties. They rarely attack humans, but anyone who pays attention to the news knows that violent encounters are not unheard of. Out of 442 recorded unprovoked alligator attacks that occurred throughout Florida between 1948 and 2021, 26 were fatal, while over 300 victims were seriously injured. In 2018, the Florida Times Union reported that alligator attacks had risen in recent decades, from an average of one every three years between the late 1980s and late 90s, to roughly seven per year between 2000 and 2016. Despite this uptick, a person's chances of being attacked are estimated at one in just 3.1 million. In addition to gators, Florida is home to six native venomous snake species, including pygmy rattlesnakes, water moccasins, diamondback rattlesnakes, eastern coral snakes, timber rattlesnakes, and southern copperheads. There are as many as 50 venomous snake bites per year in South Florida alone. Headquartered in Miami-Dade County, a specialized response force called Venom One is equipped to get medication to bite victims as quickly as possible. Established in 1999, it's the only emergency response unit of its kind in the United States, and it possesses the country's largest and only publicly available anti-venom bank. The team's creation rapidly cut the response time to venomous bite calls, which has proven key to saving lives. Since then, there have been no snake bite related fatalities in South Florida, while the last known adult deaths from snake bites elsewhere in the state occurred in 2007. But there have been plenty of close calls since then, and the number of fatalities would most likely be higher if the Venom 1 team didn't exist. Number 10. Australia's Deadly Shark Attacks Australia is second only to the United States when it comes to the number of recorded unprovoked shark bites, and it holds first place for the highest number of fatal shark attacks on humans. In other words, while the total number of attacks is much lower in Australia than it is in the US, the number of fatalities is much higher. Out of 148 recorded attacks between 2012 and 2020, 18 were fatal. Most of these incidents occurred in New South Wales, where 6 out of 62 unprovoked attacks were fatal. The highest number of deaths occurred in Western Australia, where 9 out of 40 attack victims died. There were 22 recorded unprovoked shark attacks on humans in Australia in 2020 alone. Eight of them were fatal, accounting for half of the deadly attacks that occurred worldwide that year. One explanation for these high numbers is the simple fact that the country's waters are home to some of the world's most aggressive shark species. At least three Australians were killed by sharks in 2023. The most recent tragedy occurred on Halloween off Granite Beach in South Australia, where a 55-year-old surfer named Todd Gendel was dragged underwater by a great white shark measuring at least 13 feet long. His body was never recovered, despite witnesses' immediate efforts to save him. Witness Jeff Schmucker, who attempted to rescue Gendel on his jet ski, told Seven News that the shark was the length of a sedan, and he estimated its weight at somewhere between 2,200 and 3,000 pounds. Six months earlier in mid-May, a 46-year-old school teacher named Simon Bacanello disappeared beneath the water's surface while surfing with friends off Walker's Rock Beach in South Australia. The only evidence of what happened to him came in the form of his surfboard, which was found bobbing in the water with a large bite in the middle of it and some material from Bacanello's wetsuit. A young woman named Stella Barry became Australia's first fatal shark attack victim of 2023 in early February, when a suspected bull shark mauled her to death in the Swan River in front of her horrified friends. Witnesses were too traumatized to describe what they saw, but according to news reports, Barry suffered a fatal bite wound to the leg. She was pronounced dead at the scene, despite being quickly pulled from the water. According to scientists, the number of shark attacks has decreased in recent years, but it's highly unlikely that these unprovoked encounters will stop completely, especially in the waters off Australia, where it's wise to follow an enter-at-your-own-risk policy. Number 9. Hippo-Human Conflicts in Sub-Saharan Africa 
Every year, an estimated 500 people are killed in hippopotamus attacks across Africa, making hippos the world's deadliest mammal after humans. Typically speaking, hippos are peaceful herbivores who keep to themselves, but nature always comes with conflicts, and just like any other member of the animal kingdom, they won't hesitate to defend themselves if they feel threatened or provoked. And while hippos seem slow-moving at first glance, these multi-ton beasts can run at impressively high speeds of up to 20 miles per hour. They also have an enormously powerful bite force and lower canine teeth that can grow up to one and a half feet long each. Despite being the size of a car, these gargantuan creatures are capable of incorporating an element of surprise into their attacks, owing to their ability to remain underwater for up to five minutes at a time. They tend to attack out of nowhere and can overturn a small boat with ease. In recent years, Kenya's Lake Naivasha has become a hotspot for hippo attacks on humans. According to National Geographic, an estimated 40 people were killed there in 2020 after unusually heavy rains caused the lake to reach its largest size in nearly a century. With their usual stomping grounds flooded, hundreds of hippos moved into shallower waters, bringing them in dangerously close proximity to the hundreds or more fishermen who had been pushed out of other lines of work during the COVID-19 pandemic. As humans and hippos competed for a shrinking stretch of space along the lake, tensions rose and the deadly attacks began. Sometimes the fishermen are able to pass right by entire groups of hippos with no issues. But disaster can strike at any moment, and the results are often deadly for the human party. Somewhere between 29 and 87 percent of hippo attacks on humans are fatal, according to scientists, which means that a person is more likely to survive a bear, shark, or crocodile attack. Some fishermen who witnessed hippo attacks were so traumatized by what they saw that they stopped fishing. But many continue to risk their lives because they need the money, and the fishing industry is one of the handful of trades that seems to have survived the coronavirus pandemic. Some community members have called for the hippos to be culled so that the fishermen can carry out their work more safely, although many of them are fishing illegally. For now, there's no clear answer for how to make the lake accessible to everyone who wants to use it. Number 8. Venezuela's Vampire Bats in addition to sucking dangerous amounts of blood from their hosts, vampire bats tend to carry diseases, which they pass on from one host to another as they feed on the blood of vertebrates, including humans and livestock. They're a major carrier of rabies and are known to occasionally cause outbreaks among human populations throughout Central and South America. One such instance occurred starting in 2007 when members of the Warao indigenous tribe began falling ill in remote villages in Venezuela. Within a year, 38 people had perished. The deaths continued, with 16 more villagers succumbing to the disease between June and August 2008. Patients experienced telltale rabies symptoms including fever, body aches, a tingling sensation in the feet, an irrational fear of water, and eventually convulsions, paralysis, and death. Most sufferers reportedly died within two to seven days of the onset of their first symptoms. Similar outbreaks have occurred elsewhere throughout Venezuela and in other countries, including Brazil and Peru. Vampire bats primarily target livestock, but are also opportunistic and will not hesitate to feed on a human's blood, especially if their primary food source is in low supply. In rural areas where rabies immunization shots are not readily available, rabies is a death sentence. Without treatment within 72 hours at the most, the virus is 100% fatal in adults, while only two cases involving child patients have been cured. Measures have been taken over the years to try curbing the vampire bat problem, including attempts to cull problematic bat colonies, but these efforts have been futile. And while vampire bats are currently limited to Mexico and Central and South America, scientists believe they may spread elsewhere in the upcoming decades due to climate change. According to a 2023 paper by researcher Paige van der Voorst, vampire bats have started to search beyond their usual range in search of a more stable climate in recent years. A team led by van der Voorst predicted that if the bats' movements continue along their current trajectory, they could end up taking up headquarters in the United States within the next 27 years. And if that happens, there's a high likelihood that the bats will bring the rabies virus with them, leading to a spillover effect into the US. 
This already appears to be happening in certain Latin American countries where rabies has reportedly killed a significant number of livestock. In an effort to help contain the vampire bat population, Van der Verst and her fellow scholars traveled to Colombia, where they gathered samples from more than 70 bat species and in a variety of environments. They're hoping that their continued study will help to prevent the US and other places from becoming the next deadly destination for vampire bat attacks. Number 7. Bears in Alaska Alaska is home to more bears than any other U.S. state, with the black bear population numbering around 100,000, while the number of grizzlies is estimated at 30,000. There are between 4,000 and 7,000 polar bears in Alaska and elsewhere throughout the species' frigid northern range. Given Alaska's numerous bear populations, it also sees more bear attacks on humans than any other state. According to the National Park Service, nearly 30% of all recorded fatal bear attacks in the U.S. since 1900 have occurred in Alaska. Most of these encounters involve black bears and grizzly bears. While polar bears are known for being more aggressive than the other two species, they have the least contact with humans, which naturally leads to fewer attacks. Bears generally do not attack humans unless they feel provoked or are extremely hungry. For example, a bear might be quick to go on the offensive if it feels like a person is invading its space or threatening its food supply. Mothers with cubs to protect are especially prone to heightened aggression. An estimated 50% of bear attacks and 70% of fatal bear attacks involve protected mothers. In Alaska, it's also common for bears to get into conflicts with hunters by trying to claim freshly killed animals for themselves and refusing to take no for an answer. Attacks are extremely rare according to the NPS, which estimates the chances of a violent encounter at 1 in 2.1 million. Most incidents occur in remote areas. In fact, it's highly unusual for bears to wander into a populated town, especially in Alaska. But some experts fear that this is changing, especially after a polar bear wandered into a village and killed a young mother and her son in early 2023. 24-year-old Summer Myomic and her son were walking home from a school during a blizzard in the coastal town of Wales when they came face to face with the bear in the middle of a street. Bystanders tried to stop the attack by striking the bear with shovels, but were forced to run back indoors when the creature turned his aggression toward them. By the time someone arrived at the scene with a gun and fatally shot the bear, the victims were dead. Officials initially speculated that the bear was suffering from a brain-altering disease like rabies or toxoplasmosis. A thorough examination of his remains ruled out this theory and revealed that he was elderly and in poor health. This fits in line with the known tendency for nutritionally deficient adult male polar bears to be more dangerous to humans than other members of their species. It was unclear why the bear was in such poor condition, but the tragedy raised troubling concerns among some experts who suspect that deadly attacks could become more common as the decreasing sea ice threatens to decrease polar bears' access to their primary food supply. If bears become unable to catch enough seals and other typical prey, it could send them toward populated areas in search of food. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but it certainly could, and some would argue that it already is. Number 6. Jellyfish-Infested Australian Beaches The Australian box jellyfish is widely considered the most venomous marine animal in existence. Its highly potent venom contains toxins that attack the nervous system, heart, and skin cells, causing an array of excruciating symptoms that can lead to death within minutes, including paralysis and cardiac arrest. According to National Geographic, the pain is so agonizing that people have been known to die of heart failure or go into shock and drown before they're able to exit the water. For those who are lucky enough to survive, the pain left behind at the sting site can last for weeks. Just one box jellyfish reportedly contains enough venom to kill 60 humans within three minutes. Thankfully, it's rare for the creature to release a deadly amount of venom when it stings someone. Also known as sea wasps and marine stingers, Australian box jellyfish are mostly found in the Indo-Pacific region and in the waters of northern Australia. Every year between the months of October and May, a massive number of the creatures infiltrate the country's northern beaches. Anyone who enters the water during the so-called stinger season is strongly advised to wear a stinger suit. Between May and October, box jellyfish are known to gather in the waters of Okinawa, Japan, where their numbers have increased noticeably in recent years. 
The number of stings has also risen, despite attempts to create protected areas for swimmers using nets. While it's relatively rare for victims to die from a box jellyfish sting, it certainly happens. One of the most recent tragedies occurred in early 2022, when an Australian teenager named Mark Angelo Ligmeo became entangled in the 10-foot-long tentacles of a box jellyfish at Imeo Beach in Queensland. Just 10 minutes after entering the ocean, he rushed out of the water with the creature still wrapped around his body. In a desperate attempt to get the jellyfish off the boy, emergency responders doused him with 30 liters of vinegar, which can act as an antidote to a sting and stop the further spread of venom throughout the body. But he succumbed to his injuries later that day, after being rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Lifeguards had reportedly checked the water for jellyfish shortly before Ligmeo went in, but one apparently slipped by unnoticed and this is unfortunately one of the risks a person takes when they go swimming in the species habitat. Number 5. India's Snake Bite Problem An estimated 58,000 people die from snake bites in India every year, more than anywhere else in the world. It's been a growing problem for years, and it only appears to be getting worse, even as efforts are being stepped up to reduce the country's skyrocketing rate of deadly attacks. One of the reasons for this slow progress is the simple fact that India is a very large country. A deadly snake species that happens to be a major problem in one region may be virtually non-existent elsewhere, posing the complicated question of which antivenoms are the most important to develop. Producing antivenom is dangerous and labor-intensive. It also yields modest profits, according to Premium Serums co-founder M. V. Kadalkar, whose company specializes in producing region-specific antivenoms. Speaking with Smithsonian Magazine, Kadalkar, who described the manufacturing process as very technologically challenging and a problem of poor people. Simply put, while the demand for antivenom is high, pharmaceutical giants aren't exactly jumping at the opportunity to cater to the market because it won't generate the kind of cash flow that makes these companies filthy rich. The responsibility is mostly being taken up by smaller scale producers like Cattle Car, who are dedicated to helping curb India's snake bite problem but somewhat limited in their capabilities. In southern India, the indigenous Arula tribe uses their age-old snake-catching talents to run the Snake Catchers Industrial Cooperative Society. It's the country's largest high-quality venom producer, with seven countries relying on its product to develop anti-venom. The co-op focuses on the country's four most common venomous snakes, the common crate, the Russell's viper, the Indian cobra, and the Indian saw-scaled viper. The antidotes that the co-op helps to develop are invaluable, but the antivenins have different levels of effectiveness across different regions and species, and the chemical makeup of venom changes over time, which by default requires the development of antivenins to be an ever-evolving process. There are also complications with achieving a quality standard and when it comes to properly storing antivenin. Moreover, researchers say that less common venomous snakes are biting people more often nowadays, and the existing antivenins are largely ineffective. This trend is further complicated by the fact that a large number of the patients affected by it are reportedly difficult to treat. According to researchers, many people fail to seek immediate treatment for bites, often first turning to natural or spiritual remedies. During his Smithsonian interview, Kadalkar identified two possible approaches to improving the availability of high-quality antivenom in India. The more expensive route would involve creating antivenoms that are tailor-made to specific regions and species, with the eventual goal of creating an antivenom cocktail capable of treating a multitude of different snake bites. The second method would be to try making a mixed antivenom in a shorter period of time by collecting samples from many different snakes and combining them. But the project would require a large amount of skilled labor that is not realistically available. For now, the smaller scale efforts to improve India's antivenoms continue in hopes of leading to bigger milestones. Number 4. Mountain Lion Territory Mountain lions, also known as cougars or pumas, are often the apex predators of their environment. Weighing as much as 220 pounds and measuring up to 8 feet long, the largest adult males are bigger than an average human. These ambush hunters are strong, stealthy and fast, with the ability to run at speeds of up to 40 miles per hour and silently sneak up on their prey. 
They are found across a vast range of territory spanning as far south as Texas, north to British Columbia, and throughout most of the western United States. It's not customary for mountain lions to attack humans, but it happens from time to time. There have been at least 25 attacks in Colorado since 1990, including three that ended in death. There have been at least 22 verified mountain lion attacks on humans in California, three of which were fatal. The most recent deadly cougar encounter in the state occurred in January 2004, when a 35-year-old cyclist named Mark Reynolds was attacked along a trail in Orange County. His death came amid a spate of mountain lion attacks on humans in Whiting Ranch Wilderness Park, which sits nestled at the foot of the Santa Ana Mountains. Two people have been killed by cougars in Washington state over the last century, with the most recent attack occurring in 2018. 31-year-old Isaac M. Sederbaum and 32-year-old Sonia J. Brooks were mountain biking in the Cascade Mountain foothills when a mountain lion began following them. The friends reacted just how experts advise, by being loud and big and trying to scare the offending feline off. But the cougar came back for more as the two cyclists were catching their breath and sank its teeth into Sederbaum's head without warning. He managed to fight the animal off and sped away on his bike in an attempt to obtain a cell phone signal so he could call 911. By the time emergency responders reached the remote location about an hour and a half later, Brooks was dead. Officials concluded that the victims did not seem to be provoking the animal, and the cougar's reason for attacking Sederbaum and Brooks remains unclear. The first and only documented fatal cougar attack in the state of Oregon occurred in 2018, when 55-year-old Diana Bobert was found mauled to death in the Mount Hood National Forest. As an avid hiker, she frequented the area often. Her family reported her missing after she failed to return home from one of her routine visits to the park. Bobert's death came amid a noticeable spike in Oregon's cougar population in recent years, which has led to increased encounters between them and humans. This seems to reflect a bigger trend throughout the United States, where mountain lions are being spotted in residential areas with alarming frequency. In addition to targeting people, cougar attacks on pets seem to be on the rise. As these dynamics shift, experts and officials are monitoring the changes in hopes of gaining a better idea of what the future might hold and how to tackle the situation in the present. Number 3. Shark-Infested South African Waters between 2012 and 2021, 29 people were attacked by sharks in the waters off South Africa. Six of them died. Since then, at least two more fatal attacks have occurred. These ambushes are carried out by three species, bull sharks, tiger sharks, and great white sharks. During a particularly violent period lasting from December 1957 to April 1958, at least six people were killed in a series of nine shark attacks off Natal Province. It's believed that the sharks were lured into the area by increased activity from commercial whalers, a rise in tourism, and livestock being washed into the ocean by recent floods. One of South Africa's most horrifying shark attacks occurred in 2010, when a Zimbabwean tourist named Lloyd Skinner was yanked under the water and pulled out to sea by a great white off Fish Hoke Beach in Cape Town. Witnesses described seeing the shark approach Skinner, who was standing in chest-deep water when the apex predator made its move. One bystander described the shark as dinosaur-sized, while another said it was the length of a minibus. South Africa's top shark spots became so well known for its great white shark population that it became a top destination for cage diving. Tourists were willing to pay a pretty penny to descend into the water from the safety of a metal cage, while a nearby boat crew lured great whites to the areas with meat. But the majority of South Africa's great white population mysteriously vanished in recent years and there are no signs of it returning. At first, scientists were baffled by the shark's disappearance. In their quest for answers, they discovered that killer whales had started attacking great whites and driving them out of the area. It was the first known instance of any animal attacking the apex predator. According to researchers, the orcas have a taste for the great whites' livers. The whales were killing sharks just for their livers and then discarding the rest of the carcass. This initially caused scientists to fear that the orcas were killing off great whites en masse. They were relieved to eventually discover that the great whites had relocated eastward. Since the shark's departure from the region, an array of new species has moved in, including bronze whalers and seven-gill sharks. 
The changes have taken a major toll on the cage diving industry, forcing many companies to go out of business or refocus their business on other types of tourism. Number 2. Large Predator Attacks in South Asia In early 2023, a group of researchers from Italy's Muse Science Museum published their analysis of over 5,400 large predator attacks that occurred around the globe over a 70-year period. Based on their findings, they determined that the vast majority of these types of encounters occur in South Asia. The team focused on 12 animals, including wolves, coyotes, lions, tigers, leopards, jaguars, cougars, and several different bear species. They also categorized the incidents into different types of attacks, including accidental encounters, mothers protecting their young, and hunts for food. Roughly one-third of the cases were fatal, while 68% resulted in injury. The data, which analyzed incidents that occurred between 1959 and 2019, revealed an increase in attacks over time. The trend was especially evident in low-income countries. Over half the cases analyzed occurred in India, Nepal, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, and Pakistan, and most of the incidents in South Asia happened in India. While it's reportedly rare for leopards, wolves, and tigers to hunt humans throughout the region, it's not unheard of for these animals to act opportunistically from time to time and in certain places. In the Sundarbans mangroves of India and Bangladesh, for example, the team identified a noticeably high number of tiger attacks on people who were fishing or gathering materials in the wilderness. There are several possible explanations for South Asia's disproportionately high and growing number of unprovoked carnivore attacks on humans. According to the researchers, people in more developed countries are likely to encounter predators while engaging in recreational activities. In low-income countries, on the other hand, humans tend to cross paths with wild animals while farming and carrying out other everyday activities. In South Asia, habitat loss resulting from deforestation, climate change, and the growing human population has forced people and animals to share a shrinking amount of living space. As these trends continue on their current trajectories, violent encounters between humans and large predators are likely to increase in frequency. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. Number one, Florida, the shark bite capital of the world. Between 2012 and 2021, there were 259 recorded unprovoked shark attacks off the Florida coast, also known as the shark bite capital of the world. Most shark bites in Floridian waters occur off Volusia County and, more specifically, New Smyrna Beach. According to the global database on shark attacks known as the International Shark Attack File, the worst time to enter the water is between 2 and 3 o'clock p.m. during the month of September. One of the most severe Florida shark attacks of 2023 happened off Cocoa Beach in Brevard County during late June, when a young girl received 50 stitches to her leg. Doctors counted between 75 and 100 puncture wounds, leading them to believe that the shark had bitten the girl twice. The most recent fatal attack in Floridian waters occurred in February 2010, when 38-year-old Stephen Schaefer was bitten by at least one bull shark while kitesurfing off Stewart Beach in Martin County. A lifeguard reported seeing several sharks surrounding Schaefer, who was bitten twice. He was plucked from the water and rushed to the hospital, where he died from blood loss. According to the medical examiner who performed Schaefer's autopsy, the lethal bite was so deep that the shark's teeth hit his bone. Five years earlier in 2005, a teenager named Jamie Daigle was yanked underwater by a shark while boogie boarding off the Florida panhandle. By the time a nearby surfer reached the young woman, she was lying face down in the water in a pool of blood measuring 20 feet in diameter. It took the surfer multiple tries to get to Jamie, and the shark followed him all the way to the shore. Jamie succumbed to massive blood loss and may have been dead before she was pulled out of the water. Most of Florida's recorded shark attacks between 1926 and the present involved species from the Carcharhinidae family, including blacktip, spinner, and sandbar sharks. Roughly 16% of attacks were attributed to bull sharks. The good news is that the vast majority of these attacks are non-fatal and most injuries are minor. Moreover, these shark species do not pose a significant risk to human safety when proper precautions are taken. 
It's not in their nature to prey on people as a source of food, and it's exceedingly rare for a shark to continue attacking someone after taking an initial bite or two and realizing it's not their preferred cuisine. Usually when a shark bites a human, it's because they're confused, curious, feel threatened, or have offspring to protect. 7. Mauled by a Mountain Lion In 2004, a tragic incident occurred in Orange County, California, when a mountain lion killed 35-year-old cyclist Mark Reynolds. This marked the sixth fatal mauling of a human by a mountain lion in California, and the first time since 1994. The incident unfolded on a popular trail in the rugged Orange County foothills. Reynolds was cycling when the chain on his bike broke, leaving him vulnerable to a stalking mountain lion. Then, when he crouched to fix his bike, the mountain lion likely perceived him as prey and attacked him, dragging him off the trail. Reynolds' body remained undiscovered until late afternoon that same day. Tragically, the same cougar later mauled another cyclist, Anne Hiel, who was rescued by fellow riders and remained hospitalized in serious condition. Authorities responded by shooting and killing the 110-pound mountain lion responsible for the attacks. And in addition, they decided to shoot and kill any mountain lion they encountered near the trail to ensure public safety. The Whiting Ranch Wilderness Park, where the attacks occurred, was also closed indefinitely. Wildlife experts noted that mountain lion attacks on humans are rare, and the animals typically avoid human contact. However, when they do attack, they tend to target individuals in a vulnerable or crouched position, as was the case with Reynolds. Factors such as increased human development in wild areas have also contributed to such incidents becoming more frequent. Mark Reynolds, an avid cyclist, had a deep passion for biking and had relocated to Southern California to ride year-round. He was described as an outgoing and generous individual who quietly donated bikes to underprivileged children during the holidays. Angel, the other victim, was a dedicated cyclist who enjoyed riding the trails in the same area. She was known for her strength and humility among her riding companions. 6. Egyptian Shark A Russian man tragically lost his life in a shark attack off the coast of one of Egypt's Red Sea resorts near the city of Herghada in June 2023. The victim's identity was confirmed by the Russian consulate in Herghada, although his name was never disclosed. He was described as a Russian citizen who was born in 1999, and he resided full-time in Egypt. He wasn't a tourist, as some media outlets have reported. The attack occurred in the Red Sea waters, and the aggressor was identified as a tiger shark. In response, Egyptian authorities took immediate action, closing off a 46-mile stretch of coastline as a precaution. The Environment Ministry of Egypt even caught the shark responsible for the rare attack and began an examination in a laboratory to determine the reasons behind it. A video of the incident circulated online, showing the victim struggling in the water while being repeatedly attacked by the circling shark before being pulled beneath the surface. Despite efforts by onlookers and a lifeguard from a nearby hotel who raised the alarm, they were unable to reach the victim in time to prevent the tragedy. Shark attacks are rare in the Red Sea coastal regions. However, in 2022, two fatal shark attacks occurred within days of each other in Herghada, one involving an Austrian and one Romanian victim. According to the International Shark Attack File, Tiger sharks, known for residing in tropical and temperate waters, are among the species most frequently associated with unprovoked attacks on humans. Egypt's Red Sea resorts, including Herghada and Sharm el Sheikh, are well known for their beautiful beaches and vibrant marine life, making them popular destinations for European tourists and divers. The region's coral reefs also attract divers with their rich and colorful sea ecosystems. Egypt has been working to revive its tourism sector in recent years, which had suffered due to factors like political instability, the COVID-19 pandemic, and the conflict in Ukraine. But these shark attacks likely add yet another reason why the country's tourism industry has been struggling lately. 5. Horrific Hyena Attack 
India's Boon district faced a heightened risk of man-animal conflicts in 2021 after two individuals were attacked by an injured hyena in Karpudi village, which is located in the city of Kedaluka. The victims were 70-year-old Pandurang Sahadu Jadev and 25-year-old biker Rahul Madhukagad. Following these attacks, the State Forest Department took measures to increase vigilance and raise awareness in the region. The hyena responsible for the attacks was later discovered dead having been struck by a vehicle. A video capturing the attack on Jadav had gone viral on social media, leading forest officials to identify and locate the person who recorded it. Deputy Conservator of Forest for the Junar Division, Jayara Megdawa Ah, explained that the video's creator was part of a tourist group that had recently visited a local temple. They'd noticed the hyena's presence near the road and warned Jadav, who was heading in that direction. But despite their advice, Jadav continued, believing hyenas were common in the area and that he wouldn't be attacked. Sensing potential danger coming, the videographer began recording. Jayara Magauda stated that hyena attacks are exceptionally rare and this particular hyena was likely hungry, dehydrated, and aggravated due to its injury. In response to the incidents, the Forest Department increased vigilance through patrolling and initiated awareness campaigns in the region. These campaigns were conducted in schools and villages, with posters distributed to households, educating residents on how to handle man-animal conflict situations. Both Jadav and Gade were injured during the attacks, with Jadav's injury being more severe. Hyenas possess powerful jaws, and Jadav required surgery for his wounds. He was closely monitored for his recovery and began an anti-rabies vaccination course. 4. Missing Grandma In October 2022, a tragic incident occurred in Jambi, Indonesia where a 54-year-old grandmother went missing while collecting rubber on a plantation near her home. Her family reported her disappearance to the authorities, but when her husband went searching for her, he only found her belongings, including sandals, a jacket, a headscarf, and a knife. Two days later, though, a search party made a gruesome discovery. They found a 22-foot reticulated python with a significant bulge in its stomach. And upon further examination, it became apparent that the python had swallowed the missing woman whole. Her body was found largely intact after residents split open the snake's belly. Notably, no one had witnessed the woman being consumed by the snake. Reticulated pythons are the longest snakes globally, with some reaching lengths of up to 28 feet. They're known for their climbing ability, using their muscular bodies to wrap around tree trunks and exert upward force. This incident serves as a reminder of the potential dangers posed by wildlife in regions where humans and large predators share habitats. Reticulated pythons, while not typically aggressive toward humans, can pose a risk when they feel threatened or hungry. After the horrifying discovery, local authorities in the area emphasized the importance of staying cautious and vigilant when working or venturing into natural environments where such animals reside. 3. Vicious Seal In July 2022, a woman swimming at a beach in Waikiki, Hawaii, had a harrowing encounter with an endangered monk seal and her pup. The incident occurred as the woman approached the mother seal and her young one in the water, and the whole thing was captured in a video by a witness. In the video, the mother seal comes into contact with the swimmer and pulls her underwater. Fortunately, though, the swimmer was aided by bystanders and managed to return to the shore safely. Marcus Fagel, who recorded the incident, emphasized that it wasn't an attack, but rather a protective response from the mother seal toward her pup. In an interview with CBS News, Fagel explained that it was just an accidental encounter with the swimmer. Before the encounter, the mother seal had lost her pup briefly and started vocalizing. Witnesses saw her searching for the pup and then returning to her usual area on the Diamond Head side of the beach. The victim, a 60-year-old elementary school teacher from California, suffered lacerations to her face, arm, and back in the incident. And luckily, state officials said that they wouldn't recommend charges or fines for the woman, as she was considered to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. 
Since the incident, the Hawaii Marine Animal Response and other organizations have been monitoring the mother seal and her pup. They've warned people to maintain a safe distance from monk seals as they're an endangered species and it's illegal to touch, harass, injure, or kill them. While there's no specific law about the distance to keep from monk seals, recommendations are to stay at least 150 feet away from a mother seal and her pup. Monk seals are generally not aggressive, but mothers can become protective of their pups, leading to potential risks. After everything, the shoreline where the seals live was cordoned off, and beachgoers were cautioned about getting too close to the animals. NOAA Fisheries reviewed the incident and advised people to consider using alternate areas for water activities when mother seals with pups are present. The mother and pup were expected to remain in the area for about a month, and the public was urged to follow guidance from official agencies to ensure their safety and the protection of these endangered animals. Sadly, there are fewer than 1,600 monk seals remaining in the wild. 2. Dangerous Orangutan In June 2022, a viral video emerged showing an incident at the Kasang Kulim Zoo in Indonesia, where an orangutan grabbed a man who jumped over a fence and approached the animal's cage. The man, who was later identified as 19-year-old Hassan Arafin, was seen in the video holding his arms out near the orangutan's enclosure, seemingly trying to engage with the animal. But the orangutan reacted by grabbing Arafin's shirt and pulling him toward the cage's bars, causing him to shout in surprise and fear. During the 30-second clip, an unidentified person can be observed attempting to free Arafin from the orangutan's grip. And at one point, the orangutan attempted to put Arafin's foot into its mouth. Eventually, though, the person trying to intervene successfully pulled Arafin out of the orangutan's grasp. The video quickly gained widespread attention after being shared by a London-based video site called Newsflare. It was subsequently shared on various social media platforms, including Twitter and Reddit, where it garnered millions of views, likes, and comments. Many viewers found humor in the incident, with some even creating memes and jokes about the orangutan's actions. While some criticized Arafin for his interaction with the orangutan, suggesting that he got what he deserved, he later clarified that he was only attempting to play with the animal and didn't intend to tease or provoke it. Arafin expressed his shock at the orangutan's swift reflexes and how quickly the situation escalated, stating that he believed he might not survive the encounter. The incident drew significant attention from both international news outlets and social media users, sparking discussions about appropriate behavior around animals in captivity. Despite differing opinions on the matter, the video continues to serve as a reminder of the potential risks associated with interacting with wild animals, even in zoo settings. 1. Hungry Wolves A family's camping trip in Banff National Park, Alberta, Canada in August 2019 turned into a terrifying ordeal when they were attacked by a wolf while they slept in their tent. Eliza Rispoli, her husband Matthew Rispoli, and their two young sons were camping at Rampart Creek Campground when the incident occurred. Eliza described the horrific experience in a Facebook post, explaining that during the attack, her husband bravely protected her and their children by throwing himself in front of them. He fought off the wolf as it tore through their tent, injuring his arms and hands in the process. The wolf's aggression escalated as it attempted to drag Matthew away and Eliza recounted how she desperately tried to pull her husband back, but the wolf was too strong. Luckily though, the family's screams for help reached a nearby campsite where a man named Russ Fee and his family were camping. Russ Fee, from Calgary, rushed to the couple's aid upon hearing their cries. He found their collapsed tent and witnessed the wolf's attempt to drag Matthew away. Fee courageously kicked the wolf, startling it enough to release its grip on Matthew. Matthew, who was covered in blood, then emerged from the attack with severe injuries on his hands and arms. Fee and Matthew yelled and threw rocks at the wolf to keep it at bay as everyone fled to Fee's campsite. The entire ordeal, although lasting only a couple of minutes, felt like an eternity for the family. Eliza Rispoli described it as something out of a horror movie, but expressed gratitude that they survived the ordeal as a complete family. 
Matthew Rispoli received medical treatment for his injuries, which were focused on his hands and arms. And ultimately, he recovered. Following the incident, Rampart Creek Campground was temporarily closed. Parks Canada conducted an investigation, but subsequently reopened the campground. The wolf, responsible for the attack, was then tracked down and euthanized to ensure public safety. It was determined that the wolf was in poor condition and was likely approaching the end of its natural lifespan, which would have contributed to its unusual behavior. The incident was deemed a rare occurrence, reflecting the wolf's abnormal condition rather than a typical wildlife encounter in the area. Thanks for watching. Would you rather see a gruesome animal attack during what was supposed to be a low stress getaway or witness some extremely shady activity that you were not supposed to see right before a passenger mysteriously goes missing during a cruise? Let us know in the comments below and remember to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.